Hey, hey folks, oh, it's a beautiful day. I was going to shoot some video on how I direct seed in our raised beds in chopped leaves in living soil. And then when I was getting the camera out and everything, I thought, well, you know, I'm going to set up my automated earth boxes to plant our scarlet emperor beans to go over this arbor. I thought, well, maybe I'll shoot a quick video just as kind of a refresher on how we have come up with a way to take a self-watering or bottom watering planter such as this in this case it's the earth box there are several brands out there now that are available and they claim to be self-watering but that's a little misleading because they're only self-watering when the plants are tiny for days at a time and once the plants get mature like when this thing is filled up with scarlet emperor beans I'll go through about 15 gallons of water in just a few days so there's no going away for the weekend not even overnight when you have mature tomato plants mature anything that's growing vigorously in these boxes so we came up with a way to be able to go away for the weekend the week uh, the month and we we do that by using this box that has a mini float valve and i'll zoom in here as i set this thing up i will take you through the whole process and try not to be too long-winded so let's get going on it so here's what we need this is going to be our water reservoir it's just one of those totes and here's one earth box here's the second earth box we have some tubing we have some split tubing I'll show you what we use that for and then this is our mini float valve inside our box so here's the setup I set up the the tote here and then I have a, a fitting that I was able to adapt a, a hose fitting to it just because I wanted to put a screen in there just in case there's debris but then this quarter inch black tubing then just connects to the mini float valve which will shut the water off when it gets to the the height that we want it to be inside each of the earth boxes so the tubing if I can do this without making shadows the tubing goes in and then another piece of tubing connects to this second earth box which only has a grommet then in the one side and then to this I will attach this split tubing and that just hangs there on that end and then on this side I will attach split tubing so that split loom tubing what that does is it prevents the roots from clogging the tubing so the water can pass freely from one container to the next and then so on this side I just let that split tubing just hang loose because there's no grommet on the other end and then we will attach put the screens in and fill them up with potting mix to speed things up I filled the tote and I added water directly to the two earth boxes and so the the float valve has shut off so the water level is actually higher than it will be once it's operating but I just wanted to get things jump started here so then I'll put the screens on so these screens fit in there and that's what prevents the potting mix from coming in direct contact with the water except for in those two corners where the water is allowed to wick up into the potting mix and we will use the fill tubes not that we're going to use them to fill the boxes but that plugs up that hole and then we can look down into them kind of use a dipstick and we can check to make sure that our water is 
flowing as it should into each of the boxes. All right, let's fill them up. When, when they're about half full of potting mix, and I use Pro Mix. I've had really good luck using Pro Mix. I use that in all of our container gardening. I, when I have them about half full, I discovered last year this product that eliminated the need for later in the season adding a hydroponic solution because this Pro Mix or any kind of potting mix only has a finite amount of nutrients in it, whatever they put in there. And when the plants use that up, they need more. And so we have to supplement them with something. So the hydroponic solution works well using that in the reservoir. But what I started using was this <laughs> chicken poo. It's considered organic. It's a, a granular chicken manure base. I did it, I used it last year on our pepper plants and they really did well. So what I do is then add about about two cups when I have them about halfway full. And then I'll mix that in and then finish filling them. And then later in the season, if the plants start looking like they, they're a little tired, they need a little help, you can, I usually use chopped leaves on the top as a mulch in our containers, but you can pull those chopped leaves aside, add another cup or two of this chicken poo, and that should get them, get them fired up again. So I filled them not completely to the top. It's like two inches from the top or so. And then once the seeds germinate and the plants start growing vigorously, I will mulch heavily up to the top with chopped leaves. Just, we're not gonna get any worm activity in these, of course, because it's potting mix, but it'll, it'll uh, greatly reduce the amount of evaporation and, and the, uh, even the amount of rainwater that's going to come into there. But what I did before I, filled them, or while I filled them, I added my circling stoppers, which are that the pieces of corner bead that I add to all of my containers because it greatly reduces the amount of circling of the roots and, and encourages air pruning. So it's really kind of an effective, inexpensive way to, to solve that problem. So I'm going to for one time only, I'm going to water these things from up above. So it just kind of, it just kind of jump starts. It kind of primes the pump. We're going to hydrate this potting mix, and then from then on, it'll wick up from the bottom. So once this soaks in, we're going to plant our seeds and we'll be all set. So these are Scarlet Emperor beans. I don't know if you can, if you can see this or not. They are, they are just beautiful. Beautiful beans and they're delicious. They make the best chili ever. And the plants themselves are beautiful. If I, if I can find it on the computer, I'll insert a picture right about here from last year, even though it was a terrible drought, we still had really decent growth just using this system. So there you have it. Continuous watering system works really slick. Person doesn't even need a garden. You can grow really nice crops on your patio. And we don't have to water. This will keep watering until we get a frost in October. We'll have to add water to the tote, but that's every, well, three or four days once, once they get growing vigorously. They really work well. Continuous watering system. I'll put a link below to our website where we have the kits available that include everything but the boxes. You have to use your own boxes, but it, it has detailed instructions on how to retrofit your boxes, how to drill a 9 16 hole 
install the grommets, which we include in the tubing and the split tubing and the circling stoppers and the garden stream float box and some of the fittings for the plumbing. And it's enough material to do two boxes. And if you want to do more, you just get more tubing or whatever you can. I don't know how many you could string together, three or four, I imagine. But we have one customer who's purchased four of those kits so far from us and loves them. It allows him on his patio to grow a container garden. So the next video is going to be all about growing in our raised beds in our living soil using chopped leaves and using the same circling stoppers or the corner bead which I make the circling stoppers out of but I keep them the full lengths and start the seeds and then cap them off with these corner bead and then I'm able to grow in the chopped leaves without them in with no interference so that the seeds have a chance to germinate before so the leaves don't smother them. But that's that's for another video. And it's all in this book. Worms in our beds, raised bed gardening and living soil. I wrote this over the winter and it describes in exhausting detail <laughs> how I do it. How we use chop leaves to grow incredible crops. It's so easy. And I talked to a little bit about container gardening and such, but that's a pretty good read. Available on Amazon, $14.95 or something for the print book, and it's only like five bucks for the ebook. But that's for the next video. So until next time, is Mark again with Backwood Basics. Probably now more than ever. Let's grow together.